What is up bras and welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about Dokibi and what a huge role she has in this new meta. Now I've been getting a ton of questions asking about how can we stop the operators, they seem like they're so OP. Now I know a lot of these questions are coming from people that haven't tried it yet before, but regardless of them having tried it or not, I know a lot of people have now that it has been on the TTS for a couple days, it's always good to know what the best counters are for certain operators. So for this one, we're gonna be going over one of the best direct counters to Maestro, kind of break it down, look a little bit closer at him and some of the operators that we can really, really hard counter him with. If you guys have any questions that you guys want answered, be sure to leave them down below and I may select your question for the next topic that we go over. Now, there has been so much buzz and hype around the new operators in Alibi and Maestro, and I've even heard a lot of discussion about how Maestro and his new gadget could have a big impact and role in not just the upper levels of ranked and all levels of ranked, but also in Pro League. Now, we will just have to wait and see about that one because time, trial, and error will only answer that for us. I'm personally a little bit skeptical about those claims, because he is kind of like a different type of echo where he needs to stay alive in order to use his gadget and if he is to shock someone with his gadget it doesn't interrupt actions such as planting the diffuser when echo does. So if he's in like a 1v1 situation and they have to get the plant down and there's only a couple seconds left echo's really gonna shine in that encounter especially now that he has two drones and if it interrupts the action and time is out, that's an instant win for the defenders. So yeah, like I said, it's definitely gonna be time trial and error to see if maybe he'll ever get picked over Echo. I'm saying there's probably a time and a place for everything, but only time will tell. Now, of course, there are still a ton of things that if Maestro is in control, of his gadget he can do that echo cannot even though it's stationary maestro is able to shoot out any types of drones that come along he can even take out thermite charges and habana charges like i know priest had a really really clever video of him placing a maestro camera inside of the kitchen watching over the hatch on clubhouse and then when thermite came over he was able to zap the thermite charge and force thermite to rotate down the stairs and he was able to take him out so there's a ton of things that Maestro brings to the table that Echo doesn't. Maestro's gadget is also a thermal vision that can see through smokes. So you guys remember that Glass Ying smoke meta, right? Maestro's gadget would be able to still see through all of that smoke and chaos that was going on and he could zap anybody that's getting in the pathway as well as any gadgets that they may be placing down such as claymores. Now Maestro's gadget does about five damage per little shot and the way it works is there's a cooldown. So you can literally just hold down the fire button and it will keep going until it overheats. But you can kind of burst fire it and keep a stream of line of fire going for quite a while. Now when I was playing Maestro, I kind of learned that he's kind of like one of the ultimate troll operators. You can get some shots going on to an enemy and then when they turn around to look at it, you can switch to the other camera and start zapping them from behind while they're looking at the one camera. Then they'll turn back, look at the other camera, you can switch back really quickly and it can get super annoying. It's a really, really funny troll and it's really fun to do honestly. Now those things may not even matter because arguably the biggest asset he brings to the team are his two cameras that can only be destroyed by a smack with sledge, explosives, and destroying the wall that it's placed on. Both shock drones and EMPs from Thatcher only temporarily disable the cameras. If Maestro chooses to never shoot anyone with his cameras, they will never be destroyed by bullets or melee hits. In order for them to be taken out by shooting them or by smacking them, or you could even twitch drone them if this is the case, he would have to be aiming down the sights which opens up the shield for the whatever I'm just gonna call it the blaster for this video. 
and then that way they would be vulnerable. If he uses it purely for information for him and his teammates, which his teammates, yes, they can view it, it's very, very powerful gadget. Now, this is where Dokebi comes in and why it makes Maestro a very risky operator to play as as well. In the Pro League Finals, we saw a ton of Dokebi play. I think it was definitely more than any of us had anticipated. We saw some of the best players in the world using her, such as Kantor Akedi, who was on Penta subbing in for Shate, got second place in the finals. Now, with just the simple press of a button, the defender's phones go off, and it makes it so much safer for the attacking team to make coordinated pushes. Mainly, the point that I'm getting at is before this update, Doke B was a great operator to choose regardless of the situation. Usually she is picked for that simple role and also for her great weapons. If she happens to hack any defending cameras by taking a phone off of a dead enemy, it was pretty much just a plus at that point. While it is an annoyance to have your cam spot you as a defender and your, and your cameras to kind of betray you, it didn't have much of an impact since defenders can simply shoot out the cameras and they pretty much know where all of them are. Well, that's not the case with Maestros. Since Maestro's camera turrets can only be destroyed by explosives and sledge, that makes it insanely dangerous if Dokibi is able to get her hands on the defender's phone. She will be able to get on Maestro's turrets if she's able to hack a phone, and while she won't be able to shoot, Maestro's turrets are generally placed in or next to where the objectives are, maybe by where there's common anchors or where there would be common rotations. So let's say you're Bandit and you choose Barb's Wire and are in one of the last stages of the round. If a Maestro turret starts spotting you because it got hacked by a Dokibi cam, there's nothing you can do but get tagged over and over again. Also keep in mind, for the people that solo queue, there's nothing you can do to stop that Rook from roaming all the way across the other side of the map because he thinks it's a good idea. There's not much we can do to stop that. And then now, all of a sudden, if there's a Dokibi on the other team, they got very, very easy access to that camera. Now, I know that's not always the case, but we're just pulling out situations just for the topic of conversation. But anyways, back to the topic. So you're bandit in one of the final moments of the round and all of a sudden you just start getting spotted over and over again by one of Maestro's turrets. Of course, you can choose to rotate, which a lot of times that would just mean you're going to be running into the enemy's line of sight while they're aiming head level and then you're going to get wiped. But also keep in mind that Maestro has two turrets. What I saw a lot of times were once I hacked into Maestro's turrets and started spotting defenders, they would try to rotate, but they wouldn't be aware of where the second Maestro or sometimes even the first Maestro was placed. And then they would end up just rotating straight into the line of sight of the second one. But say you're Bandit and you did choose to bring a C4 and for some reason it's towards the end of the round, it's in a 1v1 situation, Dokibi has hacked into Maestro's turrets and you haven't used your C4 yet. Are you going to choose to destroy one of Maestro's hacked turrets and to stop getting spotted and use your equipment, your one and only C4, and then just potentially get spotted by the second one anyways? I don't know. I guess it's really depending on the situation and the player. Whatever you may choose to do, there's definitely a lot to think about with this new update and so many things below the surface to uncover as far as new strats. You guys probably saw in one of these clips here, I was spotting the enemy who was the defending team after I had hacked into the turrets and they chose to use an impact grenade in order to destroy their teammates camera which is a pretty good choice. A lot of times those impact grenades are going to be used in the beginning of the round to set up rotations though so some people may not always have the extra utility in an impact grenade or a C4. A lot of times would be the defenders would be getting spotted with literally nothing they could do about it unless maybe Maestro's alive then he could go over and pick them up I guess. I think that some of this will definitely be avoided by having a well coordinated team of five but that also means that for solo queuers there's probably a chance that there's going to be some rounds that are more chaos and miscommunication than before. I believe Maestro is a really good operator if you can have good teamwork with whoever you are playing with. Otherwise, I feel like it could go down the drain pretty quickly and it could become one of the bigger backfires of all operators in Siege history. Another thing to also keep in mind is that because his gadget is thermal vision, once you get your hands on a hacked gadget from Maestro, any alibis that are fake or any holograms that were placed 
will actually not be glowing. So this will help you communicate with your team which alibi is the real one and not to fall for the hologram. So Maestro is at risk of failing not just his own gadget, but also alibis the brand new other operator. Anyways, bras, I can't wait to get my hands on more with this new update. Of course, we are already working on a ton of new tricks using everything in combination with even all the old operators integrated with them. And I can't wait to share with the bra family what we have in store. Lastly, what do you think of the new map Villa and the operators so far from what you guys have seen? What strats pop into your head right away now that we know some more about them? Leave your thoughts and also any questions you might have down below and share it with the bra fam and who knows maybe that question will be our next topic for the next time when i do this type of video i love you guys all i'll see you guys all very soon in the next video peace